Hello everybody and welcome to this video. In today's video I'm going to show you how to set up RAID 1 on two or more drives. Now I've decided to record this video because recently I got two new storage drives with intentions to set them up in a RAID 1 mirrored array. Now what is a RAID 1 mirrored array? Now a RAID 1 mirrored array is simply when you get two or more drives and then when you set them up in the RAID those two drives become one drive meaning that the data that is written on one of these drives is also written on the other drive and if you have more than two drives uh, let's say you have three drives then the same data would be written across three drives and four drives and five drives providing that you do set them all up in a RAID 1 array and now this can be useful for if a hard drive fails so for example let's say this hard drive fails but this is the only hard drive you have and it's failed you've lost your data but if you have a mirrored one array you have two drives but because the data is the same on each if one drive fails it means you still have all the data on the other drive or if you do have a setup that has more than two drives on all of the other drives excluding the one that had failed now there are several different ways to set up a RAID array but in this video the way I'm going to be showing you how to set them up is through disk management which is part of Windows, it's built into Windows I believe it's been built into Windows ever since Windows XP I know it's built in from Windows Vista, Windows 7, 8, 8.1 right up to Windows 10 probably it was also built into Windows XP but you shouldn't really be using Windows XP anymore because support for that ended like about two years ago as of recording this video but regardless of all the incompatibilities and end of support for the Windows operating systems I'm going to say that if you are running Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 8.1 or Windows 10 then the method that I'm about to show you in this video will apply to you. Using the method I am about to show you in this video to set up your RAID array, you will want to make sure that all of the drives you intend on being in this RAID array are all the same kind of connection interface. And also the method I'm going to show you only works with storage drives that are plugged in via the SATA interface, SATA Express, M.SATA, M.2, U.2 and NVMe PCIe interfaces. Now in case you didn't catch what I said because it was a fairly long list especially to someone who's not familiar with these different types of interfaces I will list them all on the screen here. If your storage that you're wanting to set up isn't connected via any of those interfaces then the chances are this video and the tutorial that I'm about to show you will not work in your circumstances. Now I have done some testing myself and I can say that the method I do use in the video also doesn't work with drives that are connected by USB. Now these could either be like USB external hard drives such as that one that I've got here or it could be hard drive docks that are also connected by USB. So if you have a hard drive dock such as this one which as I've just shown you does connect over USB 3 and you want to set up RAID in this hard drive dock via USB it's not possible using the method that I'm about to show you in this video. It may be possible if you use an, a RAID card or some other type of software but for the method that I'm showing you in this video you can't set up RAID over a USB cable. Now before you go ahead and just throw all of the drive, well not throw, but put all of the drives in your computer ready to set up this RAID array, there are a few things that you need to make sure. So the first thing that you need to make sure of is that all of the drives you're wanting to set up in the RAID array are connected via the same interface. Both of these hard drives here, which is what I'm going to set up the uh, RAID array with, are both connected via SATA, so I'm good with that. And as I'm setting up RAID 1 in this video, another thing that is crucially important in order to set up RAID 1 is both of the drives need to be the same capacity. As you can see here, both of my drives are 2 terabytes. It is at this point where I would say you need to log in as the administrator. So if you are the administrator, just go ahead and log into your administrative account. And if you aren't the administrator, then I would recommend you contact the administrator to see if you can get permission to set up this RAID array. Or what would be even better and probably more realistic is get the admin to set up this RAID for you. But if you are not the admin, then just be aware that when you contact the admin, they may not give you permission to set up this raid and or they might refuse to set up the raid if you want them to do it instead. 
Now some of you may want to mirror data that is already on a drive that's in your computer and you're probably wondering how you can do that. Well in order to mirror a drive you actually need to format it or as I should say you actually need to delete all partitions from the drive meaning that any data that was on the drive will be lost after deleting those partitions because data is saved to a partition in a hard drive but if you delete the partition then you delete all of the data that was in that partition. So what you will want to do is take the data that's on the drive, back it up to another storage medium that's not going to be formatted, and then you will want to follow this procedure in the video that I'm about to show you. Go ahead, create the RAID partition, and then once a RAID partition is set up, take that backup data and copy and paste it or cut and paste it back into the newly created RAID array. But before you go ahead and do that, I will just say that if you have a drive uh, now you technically you can just get any other drive and raid these together but these drives are different so they are made by different manufacturers they are running different firmware which could cause issues and instability within the raid array so what you would ideally need to do is take your drive that contains data keep this drive just as a regular drive and then get two new identical hard drives go about setting up the raid between those two new hard drives and then simply just take this drive that's got your data on it and then copy and paste it into that newly created array. So with that, let's jump cut to the tutorial. Now when it comes to the software side of setting it up, you will need to go through this procedure that I'm about to go through and hopefully explain how to set it up and like what does what when I select different things. I will just point out before I do get into it, this will work on Windows Vista, Windows 7, Windows 8, 8.1 and Windows 10. I have got a little sticky note here with the procedure on it. I will also put this in the description so you can uh, like better read it and then you'll be able to actually copy and paste stuff because what we will need is this command here this uh, disk management.msc but the first thing that you want to do is press the windows key and the r key as it says there and that should bring up this little run box in the bottom left now what you need to type into that run box is this command so just select the command copy it uh, go over to the run box and paste it in there and then once you've copied and pasted that into the run box just simply click OK so now here we are in Windows Disk Management before I do go ahead and actually set up the RAID array I will just uh, point out here that if you have installed brand new drives you will likely get a pop-up saying that you need to initialize the drives now if your hard drive or SSD is equal to or less than two terabytes then you can use the MBR option but if your HDD or SSD is greater than two terabytes then you will need to use the GPT option because MBR only supports storage devices that are two terabytes or less but there is one exception and that is if your hard drive or SSD is less than two terabytes but you want more than four partitions then you will need to select the GPT option because MBR only supports up to four partitions therefore if you want five partitions well you won't be able to because it only supports up to four in case you wondered why I didn't get that pop-up it is because this is actually the second time recording this video uh, I did try to record it yesterday but I didn't really like it but as a result of me previously recording it I have already initialized the drives so I won't get that pop-up but if you are interested in which option I selected, I selected the MBR option. So here you can see the two or more drives that you have just installed. In my case, it's two drives. So in order to create a mirrored array, what I'm going to do is select one of the two drives. I'm just going to go ahead and select disk two. Then you need to right click and go to new mirrored volume because that's what we want to set up. Now this little wizard will pop up which is going to help us create the, uh, the mirrored volume that I'm about to set up. So now you just want to press the next button. As I selected disk two, disk two is already selected but I also want to mirror disk two and disk three. So at the moment I will need to select disk three and add that into there. So now it's 
going to mirror the data that's on one of those drives to the other and vice versa. So once you've selected all the drives that you want to have in this mirrored array uh, and you've made sure that they are all in this selector box, you just want to go ahead and click next. Now here you can assign a letter to the mirrored array. I'm just going to select Z or Z depending on where you're from and how you choose to pronounce it. Then you want to go ahead and select next. Now it's asking us what do we want to label this volume. So go ahead and label it with whatever you feel is most relevant for your circumstances. I'm just going to go ahead and call it back up here. It is at this point in the video where I shall just point out even though I set up my RAID array like under the name of my backup, I don't actually use a RAID 1 array for a backup because there's loads of complications and loads of issues regarding what could go wrong if a RAID is your backup facility. So I thought I'd just throw this clip in here of me letting you know that ideally you shouldn't be using RAID as a backup and even though I titled the RAID backup in the video, I don't actually use that RAID array as my backup. And with all of that said, back to the tutorial. I'm going to perform a quick format even though there's no data on the drives and there hasn't been because they're new drives but I'm going to go ahead and perform a quick format and then if I click finish and now I get a pop-up saying that uh, in order to create a mirrored array it needs to convert the basic disks to dynamic disks and if you do create a dynamic disk you won't be able to install an operating system on the uh, dynamic disks but that's perfectly fine with me I've got this mirrored array for storage so I'm going to go ahead and select yes and it will just say if you select no then the mirrored array won't be created and you'll need to go through the procedure again so if you want to if you want a mirrored array you need to click yes so now I need to click on yes and it will just process the mirrored creation and there you go you can see that both of the drives here they both have the same name and they both have the same letter to them and then if I go into file explorer and then you can see here I have got my backup drive which is uh, 1.81 terabytes or 2 terabytes as far as the hard drive capacity is concerned and as you can see Windows is detecting it as just one drive. If I go ahead and create 5 new folders in there then those 5 new folders have been created and mirrored on both of those drives so now if one of those drives were to fail I still have all the data that's backed up on the secondary drive. That is going to be it for the software side of it I have since set up this mirrored array and Windows is recognizing it as it should do I'll go ahead and delete those as they were just examples uh, but anyway that is it for the software side of the video so I'll see you back in real life and then I'll do the outro for the video that's going to be it for this video. You should now have your RAID 1 RAID array set up and working. Now I am aware that I probably have missed a few things, like a few small details that I didn't cover or anything like that because when my understanding of RAID is not the greatest so admittedly there's probably going to be mistakes and errors that I didn't mention or left out or something like that. But if I think of these in the future I will be sure to update the description explaining those corrections that I may have discovered after of the recording of this video but that's it for this video so if you enjoyed it give it a like if you didn't give it a dislike comment favorite share and subscribe and as always thank you for watching i'll speak to you in the next video